Hey, buddy. How are you doing? Oh, I know. You're so loved. I know. I know you felt like you are being punished because you got your hair cut, but that's not the case. You're very loved. You are. It looks good, though. Are you feeling the benefits of feeling cooler? Are you? Do you want some chin rubs? Some chin scratches, dumb cats? That's a good boy. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Are you just cuddling up to your human? Are you? Do you feel so much cooler now? Do you? I know. Look at you. I know. You're such a good boy. You are. Well, good day, everybody. It's time to start on something new. I think for right now, I could... Uh, have a look at that Artec truss, tack it together, possibly tack it on the axle for right now. Um, it's pretty much all I can do, like I said. And then tomorrow, maybe I'll think about or look at getting that axle stub put in, so that part is taken care of. I'll just take the Jeep outside so I'll have more room. Jeep's been sitting for almost a week, so this would be a good time to see if there's a parasitic drain. Nope, we're good. Now, this is the truss kit here. Box is like ready to fall apart. Oh, I even got some stickers. Looks like it's starting to rain. Hopefully no thunderstorms, because I'm just kind of, just kind of piecing this together, see how it's going to play out. D, go there, C, with the long pieces, go like that. Wanna line this up because it should pull up as so. Now I need to get the axle, set it up to the degrees. I know my pinion set at 26 degrees. Set it on, put it level, and then tack it. Now the deal behind this is set your pinion degree roughly where it's going to be, put your truss on, and then put your truss on flat. That makes your spring perches right where they need to be because let's just kind of fit this up. Spray that with my non-chlorinated brake cleaner, which is very important if you're gonna do any welding. Once again, I said this before. If you're using chlorinated brake cleaner, there's a good chance you may kill yourself in the process. I really just want to remove this so I'm not damaging it in the grinding process. This should just. 
weasel its way up and out of there. Come on. Come on, you only held the earth nowhere. Alright, let's lift this thing back on. See how we're see how we're gonna fit up. If I need to come some more ahead. So I actually set it down to about 24 degrees as I tack it up just to see now if it was more straighter it is of course the truss would come back more but another thing I'm going to do is grind this corner off here so the breather can still function. I'm not going to film the grinding first off you should never use a grinder without the guard in case the disc blows up. I don't have the guard for it anymore, but I'm going to wear proper PPE like gloves, face shield, leather welding jacket in case something happens. Pro tip number two, if you have a rear differential like this and your rear ABS sensor starts going bad and you remove the sensor and it's all chewed up, something is seriously wrong inside your differential. The tone ring or whatever you want to call it should never come in contact with this and if this is all worn out that means chunks of metal are going between the ring and this and wearing it out seen it happen true story use this ultra copper gasket maker on this if you guys remember this was the shit that might be dried up in the tube i think just the end is dried up because it's still flexible in there come on I am being liberal with this stuff just because it's kind of a lifetime seal now and I can't forget put some on the bolt threads too that's some of the grinding I had to do to make that fit Max zero, good to go, throw some tacks on her. So far it's turning out pretty good. Dumb cats, buddy, what are you doing? Are you just chilling on the couch while we watch some episodes of Heartland on Netflix? Is that what we're doing? Hey, Dumb cats, what are we doing? Your fur feels so soft, it does. Hey, just gotta get ready to install this axle pretty quick but I want to clean it up and I'm going to use this wire brush which is the most effective way you want to be using eye protection and gloves for sure but I need to do the back side yeah, it wouldn't hurt and all the loose rust off of it should be good Final test will be when I install it and pull a vacuum on it, but these ribs are good. Good to go. Got the old Ford here, and as you can tell, I'm really excited. Once on there tight, resort to the wrench and mallet trick. As you just seen, broke it free. Right, you gotta, once you pull that out, careful of the vacuum hub. Work this thing around and then work it out. There we go. You can throw grease on this now or do it after i don't think it really matters 
I'm just making sure that it's well lubricated. I just toss that axle up top or I'll leave it until I can find or get some boots for it. Looks like I'm doing pretty good. It's been about 15, 20 minutes and holding solid. That job is done. I wanna take it out for a quick spin. Make sure there's no issues. Job sucked. It didn't suck because of the job. It sucked because when I realized the issue, I already had the front end to park, but I didn't have an axle. And I was kind of in a situation where my Jeep wasn't really drivable and I couldn't fit the wagon and cart and all that in the Jetta. So I put it off until I could get an axle. And I said, you know what, I better do it now. And it's not like, you know, those boots would have ended up ripping. Who knows, I could have got another year I mean, it could only last it a few weeks. You never know, right? You just never, ever know. But the job's done now. I got the spare one. Uh, hopefully there's no more issues. Take this thing out for a rip. I got another small project to do on it. Somebody was asking me about testing fuel pressure. Now the problem with this style of fuel system setup is that your fuel pressure is controlled by driver module. All right, just took it out for a spin. Vacuum's holding good, no strange noises, which is a good sign. I'm just uh, backing up close to the garage so I could take care of this other little project. Nice is that the power probe comes with an extremely long cable. So underneath that's your fuel pump driver module. Yeah, there's the wire right there. The second one. I'm gonna see if my terminal will fit in there. So I verify ground is good. So now I got the power probe plugged into the white wire. I try to set the camera up here. And I'll go turn the ignition on, but I'm not sure what it'll read for power or voltage. One more quick thing I'm gonna look at on the truck tomorrow, but enough's enough for today. We got a little bit of a whine going on when I'm driving. It's not too serious. Almost sounds like a power steering whine, but it's more likely another, another pulley. Probably the one I changed out in the winter time that I lost that bolt. The rib pulley seems to be the one that goes and it was a junkyard one, like the best one that I could find. So I'm gonna have to pull the belt off, uh, physically turn all the pulleys over by hand and see if there's any ones that are rough. Cause the water pump is new. The alternator has been changed out. Cause I wanted to see if that one still worked and it didn't make any difference. Cause I had that sound before. Um, a few other idlers. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We always do. Tomcats, how are you doing? I'm a little concerned for you. We may have to take you to the vet to get you checked out. Yeah, you haven't been able to jump the past few days. I was talking to Elise and she thinks you might be constipated. Mm, are you constipated, Tomcats? So what I'm doing right now is just designed a couple spacers to use in the jig. I 
All right, kind of feels like Christmas. Got lots of things. Those are the spacers I 3D printed. This one is for the control arm bushing width. It's two inch. This is for the track bar width. So I could set everything up. Got this dash cam. I don't know if it will work in the Jeep because the way the mounting bracket is and the flat window. Picked up this watch because if you guys remember that wheeling video where we went out camping, the first one, um, Steve had that watch with the uh, barometer that could tell you when it's going to start to rain. So this is a discontinued watch. I got it off Amazon for like 50 bucks. I think it was regularly close to 200. And then this is what was in the big box. This is the TIG pedal for my Aesop Rebel. Even got some stickers I could toss on stuff. Yeah, before I can tack those pieces on, I need to weld the vent hole and redrill one somewhere else once we're completed. That's why I love 3D printing. 3D print the jigs. Fit it up a little tight, so. Just got to use a port of power to tweak her up a little bit. There I go, I just tweaked her up a little bit so it's a little loose. That way when the track bar is tightened down, it'll tighten up. That one there fits the same. A little tight on the end, not a big deal. People ask me all the time what some of my favorite tools are. Porta power welder, and the most awesomest power probe. All right, it's motherfucking beer time. Let's kill this last lucky. Then we're done with them. All right, do what time it is. Motherfucking beer time. It's my favorite time of the day. It's been hot. Close to 30 degrees. It was like Christmas time. The barometer on my watch says it's gonna get cloudy and possible rain, but right now it's fucking hot and sunny, so I think it's bullshitting to me. Bullshitting. So that takes care of that. Those projects are done. Gonna start off. Um, Got some more Ford projects. I gotta diagnose what that wine is. Take try to solve that before I head out to the gold claim, which might be next week. Don't know yet, but um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Motherfucking beer time. Next few days, I don't know. You gotta figure something out. There's so many things I can be working on. I just don't know where to start or where I should end. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.